Hello, uh, Wassalan. Welcome. Shalom from Jerusalem. This is Dan Diker, and you are watching Our Middle East. Today, Israel on fire as the Iranian regime backed Hamas massacred at least 600 Israeli children, women, men, soldiers uh, across Israel in an unprecedented mass murder uh, uh, of, uh, of Israelis. We have uh, 600 dead, at least, at least 2,000 wounded and more than 150 kidnapped and captured, brought back into Gaza. It looks like a medieval horror film, but there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes. Please join us. I'm very honored to have uh, on the program one of the Middle East top analysts, Yoni Ben Menachem. Yoni, great to have you with us. Uh, it, Thank you. Man. I think uh, calling this uh, Hamas Iranian regime coordinated mass murder uh, of Israeli civilians, children, women, soldiers uh, is unprecedented. It's unprecedented actually in in, in uh, recent uh, Middle Middle Eastern political history as well as in anywhere in the West. We've seen nothing like it, and it's a continuing, ongoing situation. There's a lot that our uh, viewers and listeners need to know that has not been uh, put out in the, uh, in the press, and that's why we have our Middle East, is to uh, shed some light and offer insight into the, the, the deeper uh, machinations of what's happening in this uh, sometimes insane and chaotic region. I think you're absolutely right, uh, Dan. Uh, I think Hamas, uh, in the uh, massacre it committed in the settlements of uh, near uh, Gaza border, discovered again its true face as a murderous terror organization, anti-Semite, uh, whose aim is to kill as many uh, Jews as, as they can and uh, uh, behave like a, a, a mafia. Uh, kidnapping uh, uh, civilians, uh, children, old women, uh, and soldiers in order to uh, to extort, to make extortion of Israel, to release the terrorists uh, who committed horrible crimes who are, are behind Israeli bars. Uh, and I see this uh, Hamas, this terror organization, which is uh, uh, a, a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood movement that also affiliated uh, with Iran uh, committed uh, an international crime. And uh, I think uh, the world now begins to understand that. Uh, and this was all done uh, in coordination with Iran, uh, who is backing uh, this uh, terror organization and, and uh, gave them the green light uh, to commit this, uh, these crimes and also uh, promise them to back them uh, in, the, in case Israel will retaliate strongly uh, against the Hamas movement in Gaza Strip. I want to focus on exactly that point, Yoni ben Menachem. Yoni ben Menachem, you were, uh, in my assessment, one of the only analysts, maybe the only one in 2018, to reveal a story uh, from your vast knowledge of the Iranian regime and uh, Arabic uh, uh, language assessment and, and reportage uh, that uh, the Iranian regime uh, headed, uh, the IRGC, headed by Qasem Soleimani at the time, invited Yahya Sinwar and the senior uh, Hamas leadership from Gaza to Tehran for a strategy session. You talked about that strategy session that led to the Great March of Return where they, uh, where they engaged in unprecedented perceptual warfare, influence warfare, um, sending thousands of young children, their own children, uh, to draw IDF fire on the other side of the fence. This was a complete change of strategy uh, in, the, uh, in the Hamas arsenal, and it was clearly coming from Tehran. Indeed, and uh, what I hear today for my sources at the Gaza uh, Strip uh, this uh, uh, operation of Hamas, uh, uh, you know, which was conducted by Muhammad the Death, uh, the chief of staff of the military wing uh, and, uh, of the Hamas uh, uh, movement and the most wanted uh, uh, terrorist by Israel and also by the Americans, uh, is on the American uh, terror list. Uh, he coordinated this attack uh, directly with uh, uh, Hussein Salami, 
the uh, commander of the Revol Revolutionary Guards of Iran, and uh, also with uh, Hezbollah and uh, uh, Islamic uh, Jihad. Uh, so, uh, and he also, according to the sources in Gaza, uh, he got a promise uh, from the Iranians that they will give him an umbrella of protection if Israel uh, retaliates uh, strongly. And they also uh, promised uh, uh, to open other fronts against Israel from uh, the south of Lebanon, from the Golan Heights, the, Syri the Syrian side of the Golan Heights. And maybe, maybe, uh, I'm not sure about that because I haven't been able to confirm that, also from the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, so uh, this is very significant. So uh, we have to take into consideration that uh, yeah, if the campaign will spread and if the IDF uh, will infiltrate Gaza in order to topple the Hamas uh, regime, there is a, a, a good chance or a, good, or a possibility at least that uh, the other fronts will be open to attack Israel uh, guided by Iran. This is a very important point, Yoni, that our viewers have got to understand, and many of them do. This is an Iranian regime war that is intensified against Israel. This is not a question of will Israel attack the uh, the uranium uh, enrichment water, heavy water uh, enrichment uh, 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 plants uh, or the um, ballistic missile uh, centers in Tehran. This is already the first opening uh, or most intensified uh, massacre of the Iranian regime using its Hamas terror proxies, the way they use their Hezbollah terror proxies in the north and their Syrian state proxies in the north. I want to make one point of uh, clarification from something you said about seven or eight minutes ago. When we talk about the Hamas invasion, whole scale invasion of Israel's south, you use the word settlements. I want to remind our viewers that, that uh, Israel pulled out of Gaza, lock, stock, in barrel in 2005, pulling out nearly 9,000 Israeli residents of, uh, of uh, areas that they had lived in for, uh, for 30, 40 years. And there is an international border uh, between the state of Gaza, which is an unrecognized but de facto state, run by Hamastan. the Iranian... Hamastan. It is called Hamastan. Hamastan, run by the Hamas, completely controlled and dominated from a security point of view, military point of view, uh, administrative point of view. And the Hamas ha has this... A, a, a state, and they invaded the sovereign state of Israel. This is not disputed territories. This is not Judea and Samaria, which has uh, has come up uh, as you know disputed territories between two claimants. But they they in an unprovoked massacre uh, have invaded, uh, infiltrated, and and uh, basically uh, uh, engaged in mass murder of uh, of Jews anywhere they could. And what we understand, the only we're talking about just before we went live, we're talking about hundreds of Iran-backed Hamas terrorists with automatic weapons that flooded into Israel and completely somehow shut down the Israeli early early warning systems. Exactly, and I just want to remind uh, our viewers of what happened only last week. Uh, there were riots of uh, Hamas extremists uh, uh, near, near the fence, uh, the border fence with Israel. Uh, and they were rioting, uh, throwing stones, uh, uh, explosives, uh, shooting at Israeli soldiers, and so on. And uh, Hamas uh, claimed that, that they are doing it because they want uh, uh, to get uh, a bigger grant uh, from the Qatarian uh, uh, government, uh, which supports them every month with uh, $30 million. They wanted to... Uh, to increase the money that they're getting from Qatar, and also they demanded that Israel will allow more Gazan workers to go into Israel and work. And finally, Israel agreed, and the Qatarian also agreed, uh, and they promised to stop everything uh, on the border, and they did stop for two days, but this was a deception. Uh, while they were doing that, uh, they were preparing at the same time their secret operation to infiltrate into Israel and carry out this horrible massacre. Yoni, just to point out to our viewers, this was a multi-front invasion of Israel. There were Hamas hang gliders with automatic weapons. There were uh, Hamas attacking from the sea in speedboats, which were cut down uh, by the Israeli Navy in a last-minute uh, uh, last save 
uh, of, uh, of, of what could have been even a much worse massacre from the sea coming up uh, the Gaza coast. Uh, they also uh, fired several thousand rockets into Israel, mortars, and at the same time, a, uh, hundreds of armed automatic weapons, grenade-laden uh, uh, terrorists flooding across the feds, which the Hamas terrorists actually knocked down with their own bulldozers. Uh, and, and they traveled. We have to emphasize to our viewers um, what they may know from news reports. But again, there were scores of pickup trucks with 10, uh, each carrying some 10 heavily uh, uh, with heavy uh, 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 um, armed, heavily armed, loaded ammunition. Hundreds and hundreds of rounds with machine uh, guns, with, with machine, machine guns, guns on on pickup trucks. I mean, we're talking about 30, 40, 50 pickup trucks, which somehow the Israeli uh, military command down in Gaza did not pick up. It's hard to understand. It's hard cognitively to understand Israel, the strongest military power in the Middle East, how there was this complete uh, collapse. I've heard uh, Yoni, and we talked about this this morning. There may have been an Iranian regime cyber attack that completely shut down the electronic surveillance systems in the south. Yes, this is uh, something that uh, and Hamas or, uh, or people in the Gaza Strip are, are spreading on the, um, the, on the media, uh, on the social networks, but uh, we didn't get any confirmation uh, for it from the Israeli sources. We have to stress that, that uh, now that, that we are just recording this uh, program, it's, it's still not confirmed by the Israelis, but uh, it's uh, certainly a, a possibility. I would not be surprised. And uh, then, just a few minutes ago, the military uh, branch of Hamas issued a statement saying that uh, they used also 35 uh, suicide drones that uh, they manufactured, uh, and these drones also participated uh, uh, in the attack on the Israeli settlement. This is, a, this is really an extraordinary fact that I was not aware of myself, you know, the, uh, these uh, suicide drones. But when we're talking about, um, you know, IDF estimates are right now confirmed 600 dead, but we could be looking at several hundred more. Uh, uh, the, it was simply an unimaginable uh, uh, massacre that it took place in Israel. And I think for, for many of those that, uh, that believe that we're really in a status quo territorial conflict uh, with the Palestinian Authority, uh, but based in Ramallah, this is an existential uh, threat uh, coming out of uh, Gaza. And by the way, the Palestinian authorities pay to slay remuneration and incentive program that actually pays every one of the fighters, uh, the terrorists that has been killed or captured uh, from the Hamas side will be given an annuity, a financial annuity for life. They and their families uh, uh, following uh, this massacre. I think it's very important to point this out to our listeners because the Palestinian Authority is is complicit in this massacre through the financial incentivization uh, uh, that uh, has led to the Taylor Force Act in the United States, that has led to the uh, the the uh, freeze uh, uh, of uh, of uh, financial assistance to the Palestinian Authority from the Israeli government, and which uh, our board member uh, Sander Gerber has been very much uh, the guiding light behind uh, exposing this, especially having and passing the Taylor Force Act in the United, in the United States together with uh, uh, other uh, um, uh, colleagues and, of course, uh, the U.S. Congress. Just imagine, Dan, uh, the IDF said uh, that uh, it killed uh, 400 Hamas terrorists uh, who infiltrated Israel, at least 400. So just imagine that these murderers who committed this and a massacre, they will, their families will get salaries from the Palestinian Authority, headed by Mahmoud Abbas. Just imagine. This is something horrible. It's, it's, un it's actually unthinkable. And, and the Palestinian Authority, because it has not been identified as a terror, you know, from 1993, when it was uh, found and headed by Yasser Arafat, uh, who in 2000 was exposed by IDF as uh, being uh, actually the major leader and uh, uh, and caused behind a lot of the terror atrocities that took place in beginning in uh, the mid 1990s, all the way through the what we call the Al Aqsa War of Terror uh, in 2000. And I want to go back to this point. You've been uh, in your writings, uh, Yoni, and in your interviews in Arabic, in English, and in Hebrew. You've been pointing out 
that that uh, Al Aqsa, the Al Aqsa Mosque, or what we know as the Temple Mount compound, is very much uh, in the eye of the uh, Hamas terrorist organization. They will they are intending to ignite the entire Arab Muslim world today in 2023 around the issue of Jerusalem, the way Yasser Arafat did it in 2000. Yes, and this is why they call this uh, massacre in Arabic the uh, Taufan al-Aqsa, the flood of al-Aqsa. This is the name of their terrorist attack. And I want to point out, if you may, uh, another very important point uh, that I heard today from uh, one of my sources of Hamas in Gaza, which I know for many years, he told me that uh, uh, even though it was not the main uh, uh, objective of this terror attack, but one of the uh, uh, tar- one of the uh, uh, objectives of this uh, uh, terror operation was also to harm uh, the, the normalization process between Israel and Saudi Arabia, uh, and he said that they wanted to prove to the Saudis that Israel is a very weak country and that uh, the Saudis don't have any reason to count on Israel that it will help me, it will, will help them against Iran because the Israel is very weak uh, security wise and this is uh, one what was one of the objectives of this operation it was interesting Yoni what you point out here about uh, uh, Israel uh, allegedly being a weak power this is exactly what uh, Hassan Nasrallah said in 2000 that Israel is weak as a spider web. This is exactly what Ali Khamenei, the uh, the supreme leader of uh, Iran, said just a few uh, just a few days ago, less than a week ago. He said uh, that uh, if the Saudis are banking on Israel, they're banking on on the wrong horse, and obviously uh, that will um, he will uh, probably eat his hat uh, on those statements, uh, according to what to what uh, we understand, according yes, to but- what history has shown. It also proves the double game of Iran, that the double game that Iran is playing. On one hand, they have a rapprochement with Saudi Arabia. On the other hand, they are using their proxies to sabotage the normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel and the, and the United States. Okay, so uh, Yoni, I think uh, w- what we need to emphasize here is the Middle East chessboard, uh, which is which is driven by the Iranian regime as the great Uri Lubrani, uh, the last ambassador to Tehran, who ended his uh, his term in 1979 with the fall of the Iranian government and it and the Iranian uh, the Islamic Revolution in Iran. Uri Lubrani, Uri Lubrani used to say all the time that the Iranian regime is um, is mobilizing a chess game uh, across uh, across the Middle East, and the um, uh, the Hamas is a knight. Uh, the uh, Hezbollah is the queen, and the uh, IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran, the terror arm of the mullahs of the Iranian regime, and the Quds Force, of course, which is the foreign uh, terror arm, they are the queen on this uh, chessboard. And that you mentioned the Houthis. We mentioned in Iraq the Iraqi special forces, which are operated from Tehran. We mentioned the Syria in Syria, where the, uh, Iran uh, basically the Iranian controls Indonesia. the country. The Iranian militias in Syria, which is a state proxy of Iran, and in Lebanon, where the Hezbollah controls the country under the directions of uh, Tehran, and now we see in Gaza. So this is, a, if you if you look at the octopus, as we at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs have called it, the Iranian regime octopus. That that octopus has tentacles across the Middle East, and now they have uh, they have uh, 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 placed their tentacles and their poison into Israel on, and in its southern and, and possibly in its northern areas. It's impo- important for our, our listeners to know this is not a limited war uh, 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 on the basis of some sort of uh, economic uh, complaint of the Hamas. This is a strategic chessboard that is being uh, right now uh, 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 mobilized by the Iranian regime. Uh, definitely, and uh, we have to also uh, take into consideration that uh, uh, if the uh, armies, the Israeli army, the IDF, will go out uh, on a, a ground attack on the uh, Hamas uh, strongholds in, inside the Gaza Strip, uh, there's a good possibility that uh, uh, Israel will have to deal with other fronts. Uh, uh, from the north uh, uh, on the border with the Lebanon, not only Hezbollah, 
uh, I want to remind you then that uh, Hamas also has uh, forces in south of Lebanon. And, and uh, during last Ramadan, they launched uh, rockets towards Israel. That's so, a very important uh, point. Yeah, that's yes. a very important point. Uh, you want yes. to tell our viewers that the, the Hamas Hezbollah has a joint command center uh, in southern Lebanon. Uh, uh, Yoni, you might tell us a little bit more about that because people think that Hamas is only in Gaza. But in fact, Hamas is in Judea and Samaria. Hamas is in Jenin. Hamas is in Nablus. We, you've got Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is a branch office of the IRGC in Tehran throughout the territories of Judea and Samaria in the Palestinian Authority controlled areas as well as Gaza. But but being very much uh, based in a command center in southern Lebanon where they feel safer. Is that true? Yes, definitely. There is a joint command center, as you mentioned, uh, the, the guy, the, the person, the terrorist who and set up these uh, Hamas forces in South Lebanon is Saleh al Aroui, who is the deputy uh, of uh, the head of Hamas, Ismail Aniya. He is also uh, the liaison person to Iran and Hezbollah. Uh, he lives in a Dahiya neighborhood uh, in Beirut, near uh, Hassan Nasrallah headquarters, near the bunker that he's hiding in. And is also the head of the military wing of Hamas in the in the Julia and Samaria. So this guy is very important, uh, very important target also for Israel uh, to kill. But uh, he's the one who is in charge now uh, on the uh, terror activities from South Lebanon and also in the Julia and Samaria. And uh, two, two points here, Yoni, that I'd like to discuss with you. One. Uh, is the very delicate, sensitive, unprecedented uh, situation with Israeli captives and um, uh, and kidnapped as well as uh, captives in Gaza. It complicates the situation where, where, beyond anything that we might imagine. But let's uh, remind our viewers and ourselves that the Gilad Shalit uh, capture, which was uh, uh, carried out by Hamas uh, on a tankist, a tank um, a soldier by the name of Gilad Shalit took five years of negotiations and 1,028 soldiers, I'm sorry, 1,028 terrorists of the Hamas held by Israel that were freed by Prime Minister Netanyahu back in, I think it was 2015, if I'm not mistaken, for one soldier. Now we have well over 100, and that, and that may be an underestimate, of women, children, soldiers, civilians in the Gaza Strip. How, how, how do you begin to think about uh, addressing this? Well, uh, from what I hear from my sources uh, in Gaza this morning, uh, Hamas demands or intends to demand the release of all the terrorists that are arrested in Israel, in Israeli prisons. We're talking about uh, more than 5,000 uh, uh, terrorists from different factions, not only from the Hamas. Uh, this is one demand that they want for the release of the, of the uh, hostages. Uh, and the, the second demand is that Israel will lift uh, the siege on Gaza Strip. Uh, that means that the Iranians will be able to smuggle weapons to Gaza Strip through the sea and uh, through other places in order to strengthen Hamas even more. These are the initial demands uh, for the release of the Israeli captives. You know, Yoni, the other uh, issue we need to talk about is the, the colossal uh, collapse uh, of, uh, of of the Israeli uh, defense capabilities here, and it seems that something much much larger than we know about it had ha had been taking place and is taking place. There have been some suggestions, unconfirmed, that there may have been some sort of um, operation from the inside uh, Israel in order to either distract or black out uh, uh, Israelis. But I, I it's. It's hard to communicate in the English language the the colossal uh, situation uh, that Israel faces uh, right now, which I would suggest as a student and perhaps analyst uh, of the Middle East, as we have not seen this situation uh, since uh, Israel was fighting for its independence in 1948. I would suggest Israel is still fighting for its very independence in the Middle East in 2023. Well, absolutely, Then uh, There are many rumors uh, now uh, on the social media and also uh, on the Israeli street. Uh, there, there are a lot of theories of conspiracies. Uh, and uh, from what I understand from the political echelon, 
after the war is over, there will be a, a, a official investigation uh, for what has happened uh, uh, during the war and, and the events leading to the war. Uh, and also, uh, of course, they will check this conspiracy uh, theories. Uh, I'm gambling that maybe there will be uh, an official investiga investigation committee that we look into all these uh, allegations. There were uh, in discussions this morning um, in a uh, internal uh, Jerusalem Center uh, for Public Affairs uh, strategy session, which I know you were meant to be a, a part of, in which uh, I owe you a quick briefing of it. I know you were taken by Al Arbia. You've been on Arab television around the clock. Um, but it was suggested uh, by a senior military analyst, uh, a brigadier general, uh, that for many uh, for many years at the Foreign, Defense, Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee of the Knesset, as well in as well as in uh, military intelligence briefings of this and former governments, that there was a minority of uh, of of, gen of uh, generals and brigadier generals that were suggesting that that Israel was looking at a major catastrophe of the type that we are in the midst of right now, and that they were very much outvoted by a certain conception uh, that Hamas would not dare uh, do what they actually did today. It's it's very difficult to ignore the 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 destructive and false conception of 1973 in the Yom Kippur War, which was a strategic surprise, as the military literature calls it, and compare it to what yesterday and today, or yesterday, was a strategic surprise, as the military and counterterrorism literature calls it, uh, 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 against Israel. The comparisons are stark. Yes, uh, this reminds me uh, of the Yom Kippur War in 1973 when uh, the Israeli intelligence uh, had conceptions uh, uh, that the, the Egyptian army would not cross the Suez Canal and would not attack uh, uh, the IDF uh, uh, outposts uh, that because uh, it's just a military maneuver. And uh, this thing also, I think you're absolutely right because we saw that uh, the way that... Uh, uh, a certain mouthpiece of the, uh, the commentators in Israeli media uh, who protected and defended the uh, Yihya Sinwar, the uh, military uh, commander of, of Gaza Strip, uh, the leader of Hamas in Gaza, uh, saying that he only wants to improve the, the conditions of the Palestinians in Gaza. He doesn't want uh, terrorism, just want calm. And if we will get more money from Qatar and if he, Israeli, if Gaza workers will be able to go to work in Israel and uh, uh, I, that the war with Israel is over after the Guardian of the World Operation in May uh, 2021 and now they want only peace in Gaza and, and, and calm in Gaza. This uh, conception was part of uh, what you described and uh, uh, got a lot of support in the uh, Israeli media uh, selling it to the public, while behind the scenes Hamas was planning and preparing this horrible uh, massacre of Israelis. And where we go from here, Yoni, uh, following your astute commentary about the uh, what we call misinformation and disinformation on the part of the Hamas, we, there is a tremendous amount of disinformation now generated by the Iranian regime, generated by Hamas uh, in video and a tremendous amount of fake news. We at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, with your assistance and the assistance of our other um, Arabic uh, culture and language experts, are holding daily briefings. We call it the, da the JCPA Daily Alert Zoom Alert, uh, at uh, which we'll be holding uh, an, a, a, every afternoon, our time probably at three or four o'clock. We'll let our viewers know which you'll be very much a part of and uh, and be a tremendous... And I hope, that our, I hope that our viewers will share it on the social media because it's very important that the people uh, all over the world will know the truth. It's very important to uh, share it, uh, this briefing on the social media. Very important because this is a war of psychological dimensions. We are facing uh, unprecedented psychological warfare because of the, uh, uh, the strategic effectiveness of this thing called the cell phone. And this, this, the strategic importance of social networks and the ability to spread fake news, propaganda, misinformation, disinformation, malinformation is unprecedented in the history of warfare. And therefore, we, what we've taken upon ourselves, Yoni, as you know, is what we call perceptual warfare uh, in order to 
uh, reveal the truth and reveal the fake news propaganda uh, and and really uh, a violent misinformation that uh, our enemies are um, uh, are spreading and spreading very effectively. Israel has Western legitimacy now by by its allies, but that will uh, that will wane uh, and dissipate very quickly as Israel is forced to use um, massive force in order to defend itself and protect itself against the Iran-backed Hamas. So we invite people to join us at the JCPA briefing. We'll be uh, you can find out the uh, the briefing times on our site at jcpa.org, and then we'll and they'll be able to interact directly with you. Uh, and with our experts uh, every afternoon uh, with questions and answers, commentary uh, and photographs and, and video as well. And people should sign up for the Daily Alert, which they can get every day now, which is on a war footing. And so we'll be giving up to the minute uh, developments, uh, not only reportage, photographs, uh, uh, videos, but commentary and questions and answers. Definitely. Uh, just uh, one thing I, I want to say, uh, Dan, if we still have time. Uh, that I think that uh, Israel should be in a hurry a little bit to uh, uh, to carry out uh, this uh, 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 reprisals against Hamas uh, retaliation for the uh, horrible massacre that Hamas committed. Uh, I think we have uh, a window of opportunities which is very limited. I think I, I heard uh, President Biden giving Israel a carte blanche actually to uh, retaliate for what uh, Hamas did. But I think that uh, uh, Israel has to uh, uh, fasten its activities uh, and start attacking Hamas. Otherwise, uh, time is passing and uh, Hamas uh, and the, the Palestinian Authority, they will try to uh, uh, sabotage the Israel diplomatic efforts to gain time uh, for a proper Israeli military uh, retaliation for what happened. That's right. Time is of the essence, uh, Yoni ben Menachem. We are now we are looking at just to sum this up: uh, six hundred and potentially hundreds more uh, murdered in a in an unprecedented massacre of Israeli civilians. If nine eleven on September eleventh, two thousand one, claimed three thousand nine hundred lives in the twin towers in the Pentagon, if you take Israel's population of 9.2, 9.3 million. This was 10 9-11s on one day. 10 9-11s just took place in Israel. Some have called it Israel's Pearl Harbor, but it's very it's very important to understand that uh, at, at this point, we're talking about up to 36,000 people in American terms, according to the American demogra uh, demographics and population, were, were killed yesterday uh, by the Iran-backed Hamas. So we have a lot more uh, to report to, to commentate on and analyze together. Uh, Yoni ben Menachem, one of the Middle East uh, really great analysts and a fellow at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Thank you ever so much for your deep insights. Thank you always. for having me, Dan. Thank you for having me. And thank our viewers, too. We'll look forward to keeping you updated as we move forward in this uh, unprecedented situation that Israel and the Jewish people find themselves in. Thanks for joining.